Hey, good morning everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. I'm not really a trained sheet metal worker, but I've been in HVAC for beyond 40 years. Did a little bit of everything associated with HVAC, and back in the day I did a lot of tin work even though I did not have the training. Pretty much everything I, I do is pretty much self-taught. So the things that I tell people or show people are not meant to be presented as though it's instructional simply because I'm not qualified to give instruction. But I do have a lot of questions sometimes from different viewers that ask me how to do this or how to do that or and I try to answer as best I could. But I got a fellow uh, recently he's been watching some of the videos. He's kind of new to the HVAC industry. His name is Julian Figuerero. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. But he was wanting to know about being new to the industry, wanting to know how to, to lay out fittings and things of that nature. And I told him that what I did was learned how to draw up what it was that I wanted to build in an isometric fashion so that you can actually see what it is that you want to build and then it'd be easier to figure out how to measure that and then how to add the dimensions to it. So this is just a quick little video. It's not for the trained people in HVAC, not for the trained tenors, none of that stuff. This is just shortcuts learned by somebody that pretty much learned it on his own passing a little bit of suggestion on to somebody else. But first and foremost, my suggestion to Julian would be to get some formal training because there's absolutely nothing like formal training. If you've got an opportunity to get into a union shop and go through their four to five year union apprenticeship program, you're going to get training that you, you, you just can't even believe. Just absolutely incredible. So that would be what I would recommend. But in the meantime, if you want to mess around and watch somebody like myself that I consider I consider myself somewhat of a hack because of that lack of official training. So that having been said, I'm going to show Julian some of the basics of isometric drawing. Once you understand the basics of an isometric box, so to speak, then you can expand very rapidly onto various dimensions and various shapes of things that you want to build. I remember when I was a kid and I learned how to make a draw a three-dimensional box or multi-dimensional box. I'm using a magic marker simply because it'll show up so much better. If you want to make a multi-dimensional box, you can just start off by doing this right here. You just draw a box in a box like that, connect this line, connect this line, and connect this line, and connect this line. So now you have a you have essentially an isometric drawing. So now if you want to make that into a piece of duct, you know your duct is going to be short as far as the height is concerned, it's going to be long as far as length is concerned. So you can draw your rectangle down like this right here. Then to isometrically draw this, draw this over at an angle, draw this over at an angle the same length, connect that like this right here, drop this down the same length as that line right there, and draw this into there. Now you've got almost a 3D drawing of a piece of duct. This being the height, that being the width but you can't see inside the duct so to compensate for not being inside the duct you want to visualize what's in there so you can make a dotted line and whenever you're in drafting or mechanical drawing classes dotted lines mean that they're hidden and there's something back there that you can't see but you make your dotted lines do the rest of the work for you now when it gets to the area when you should be able to see them you can go ahead and make that a solid line so now you succeeded in making a three-dimensional rectangular duct. This being the height, that being the width. If you want to go one step farther and complete that, you know you have to have dr a drive ear on it, so you can drive your, draw your drive ear on it. And you can't see the drive ear on the back side, but you know it's going to have to be there, so you can actually draw it like this right here. Again, you can't see that, so it has to be a dotted line. The only difference between that and that is dimensions, and we've added a couple of things like connections on the end of the duct. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but if you master just these two basic these two basic things right here, then build upon it, you'll be able to do exactly the things that you need to do. Now say for instance you've got a furnace of a given size, this being the front part of the furnace, we'll just mark a, a front on it, and up here you've got a plenum that you're adapting back into because you're doing a furnace change out or whatever, you always want to try everything that you can to get at least one and possibly two sides of the furnace to line up with the plenum. If that's the case, you can just go ahead and draw 
the bigger the plenum up here that goes on up into the trunk line or whatever. And now you know that you've got a straight line which is going to give you a true length of the actual fitting. Well, that true length is going to be the actual portion of the furnace that it sets on all the way up to here plus one inch because it's going to go inside an S or it's going to have a drive tab connection on it. So that gives you your true length so you know what you have to make that fitting to. So now you want to go ahead and draw your plenum in in the front dimension that you're going to need. And you can put this dimension down here, say that's 16 inch, say this up here is 20 inch. This line is straight, going back to our box again, our drawing a box, that's the side of the furnace. So you can draw this out to where it's the, the depth of the furnace. And then this here is going to be a bigger plenum. So this will flare all the way out to here and to there. But you have the straight line right here so you know what the true height of that is. So if the front is perfectly straight up and down and in alignment, and the one side, either side, doesn't matter, is in alignment, now you've got the true height on that too. So you can make this right here. Say this is going to be 21 and this is 25. You know that you've got the actual heights that you can work with and you can lay this out and let that run wild to those dimensions. And as long as you measure accurately and mark with your scribe or whatever means you're using to mark your metal, accurately it's going to come out correct. So that gives you a variation. So you can go ahead and transfer it over to here. Now you can see the transition that you're going to make. It's flaring out to the rear. It's flaring over to the left and the front is straight up and down and the side is straight up and down. You've already got these dimensions here 16 and 20, 21 and 25 and so we're going to say, just for the heck of it, that this here is to the raw edge, say is 19 inches. So it's going to be 19 inches plus one to go up the one inch or to bend over into the half inch drive tab. So this is going to be 20 inches because of the 19 inch plus the one inch. And then you have to allow for your flange around the perimeter, but that goes into an entirely different subject. But at any rate, that's how you start off with the basics of learning how to visualize what it is that you want to manufacture or you want to fabricate. So Julian, if you just sit around watching television, got you a notepad and a pencil and a, and a ruler, you can use a ruler, make it nicer and neater, you know. Go ahead and practice drawing you a few boxes. And then when you get on the, the next job, you know, whenever you need to measure something, just remember how to visualize what it is that you're wanting to build because of the configuration of how the furnace is setting in relation to the, the plenum draw that configuration out, then figure out how to add those dimensions to it, and then build on it. You just do one thing, one step at a time, and the more you do it, the more easily it will come to you, and before long you'll be making your own videos. But hopefully you'll do the right thing, and take the opportunity, if you have it, to get the actual training from a facility that has the capacity to train you in the manner in which you really need to be trained in order to enter the field this day and time. Uh, it's a lot different ball game now than what it was back when I got into it, you know, 40 some odd years ago, you know. It's entirely different now than what it was back then. But that's my suggestion to you. And hopefully this little bit of a isometric brush up, you know, helped you a little bit. Oh, another thing you can do, I forgot to tell you this. You can get you some graph paper, you know, you can go to a dime store and pick up some graph paper. And it'll have those little quarter inch squares on it. Those are really good. For, for training yourself to draw isometric drawings because you can count the boxes and everything and you can make everything nice and, and neat and proportionate instead of the way I do it out here just freehand. You know, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but for you, it, it probably would be a good idea. I learned some of this basic stuff in a mechanical drawing class in high school and that really has served me well. Everybody doesn't have that luxury. I don't even think they have mechanical drawing anymore. They got CAD system, you know, computer aided design and things like that, which I'm totally lost and I can barely turn the computer on. So at any rate, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helped you. And uh, you know what? This track meant 44, and I'm out of here, guys.